for you? Realize this. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 Have your way today, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way. Hosanna. We come to worship you today. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I got to have them. I don't know about you, but I got to have them. Hallelujah. I got to have them. The atmosphere has already been set. The choir, you set the atmosphere, hallelujah. The atmosphere has already been set. So it's conducive that we praise him today, amen. Amen, hallelujah. Give him glory today, amen. We've heard so many things. We heard that I'm going back to Eden. Hallelujah. I'm about to live, amen. I shall live. I shall live in Christ Jesus, amen. Amen, because he rode in. Hallelujah. He rode in on a donkey. Hallelujah. A.P. Wyatt changed it a little bit. He said, you know, I got to use a donkey instead of what was in the scripture. It said ass. <laughs> you know, and, and some people think that, you know, holiness is not to be able to say ass, but that's actually what was in the Bible. It said ass. I also want to say this to A.P. Wyatt. He stole my thunder today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. I was telling my wife as, you know, as we were just sitting there, is that my whole subject and what I was going to preach on today was Matthew 21. Amen. A.P. White got up here and, you know, said, I'm going to change a little stuff right away. But actually, and then, then uh, as well as this morning, got all my notes. Stayed up last night trying to prepare for the day. And it was about the triumph of Jesus coming into, into Jerusalem. Amen. And, and it was about, you know, Palm Sunday and what Palm Sunday represent, you know. And I, I, I looked at the palm leaves. We asked everyone to order the palm leaves yesterday. Uh, Dina had actually ordered my granddaughter. She actually ordered them yesterday. And when she ordered them, I, first I called Sister Glee. What's Sister Glee? My, my partner right there, you know. She actually was going to get them. But then they said they only had 32, you know. And so we said, okay, well, let's make sure the choir has them. We wanted to make sure you guys had them. Uh, then we said, let us pass them out at the door. But we didn't have enough. But enough is enough because this is enough. You know, and as I look at the stairs and things like that, I, I look at and I know that Jesus has already arrived. He's already arrived. He, he's here right now. He's here right now. And, 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 you know, the subject that I was going to go with, and we're going to get to some word as well, but the subject that I was going to go with was ride King Jesus, ride King Jesus. Ride King Jesus. Ride King Jesus. The king that I know is the one that can save our soul. The one that I know is that he's a, he's a God of a God of gods, a king of kings, a Lord of lords. He's done so many things. And as, as they were there and the crowd was there, they were cheering him on. As he arrived in, in, on the donkey, they were cheering him on. And I thought about this one thing, and I, I told Brother Taylor, hey, I got something for you today. And as I thought about that, I thought of this. Brother Taylor, can you come up here for a minute? You know, Dig and Taylor. This Dick and Taylor is my guy. I don't care what you all say about him, he's all right with me. All right? But this is what I want to say to you. As you love the Titans, all right? That's right, right? Hallelujah. Oh, man, I got my sister back there, too. I know she's, she's saying the same thing. She loves the Titans, right? And as, as, as Derek Henry comes in the game, He's on the eight-yard line, all right? He gets stopped right on the eight-yard line. Take a loss for two, two yards, okay? He took a loss. But then the crowd started yelling, started cheering. 
they throw down the palm trees out of their clothing and start waving it like this. You know, cheering them on, say, come on, Henry. You know, they call him King Henry. <laughs> All right? They call him King Henry. But I come to tell you today, brother, he scored the touchdown. When he scored that touchdown, everybody cheered in the crowd. As they were in Jerusalem, they were cheering for King Jesus as he came. Amen? Amen? He's the king. He's the real king. You know, and your heart, in your heart, you know who the king is. And you know the king is King Jesus. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on, King Jesus. That's what you knew. Amen? I come to tell you today, Palm Sunday is a day of celebration. It's a day that we celebrate. Just as oh, he celebrated that touchdown, we're celebrating the arrival and the triumph of King Jesus. Hallelujah. And listen, as you know this, it never ends. The praises never ends. So therefore, you got to see, bro. <laughs> the praises never ends. We never stop. We never stop worshiping God. We never stop worshiping Jesus, our big brother. We never stop. You can't stop. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's happening, never stop. And then as, as, as I read towards the end of this, it said this. In the crowd, the multitude of people, they were like cheering them on, amen? But then it came a time that at, the, at the point that at the end of it, they thought that death was going to have its victory. That's no, that death, where's thy sting? You know, death doesn't have a victory over our God because he lives, as you said, we live. Because he lives, we live. Because he lives, we live. We have victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's cheer him. Let's not stop cheering him. Let's stop, not stop giving him the glory. Amen. On, 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 on uh, Sunday school today and and. and, and Man, all this rolls in together because it's so funny because Dr. Johnson was saying that um, that you have to listen to what God says. He might tell you to change some things up and it's spare the moment. And that's what he's doing right now with me. He's changing some things up. He's changed some things up. He's changed some things up. He's changed some things up in the Church of Messiah. He's changed some things up. He's shifting the, the atmosphere. He's changing the atmosphere Thank you, Lord. so that way we can come and praise him in truth. That way we can come and worship him freely. We can worship him freely. It's about worshiping him freely. He has, he has loosened our shackles and he has setting us free. We're free. And it's because of what he did. Amen. It's because of what he did. And he rode in there and he rode in there with triumph. He knew who he was already. He knew his identity. It's as well as we know our identity. We just got to tap into it. We got to utilize our resource and know who we are in King Jesus. Pastors talked about last week sitting on the throne. We're there. We there. We have power. There's power in prayer. There's power in, in, in what we do. But we got to tap into it. We can't get complex. We can't just be still. We got to move. But yet he tells us to, uh, to stand still and look at the salvation of the Lord. But that's where we got to be. We got to know who we are and know that God is for us. If he's for us, who could be against us? Amen. Amen. We talked about joy, that joy. You know, that joy is something else. You know, when it's unspeakable, it's an unspeakable joy. It's a joy like no other joy, amen? Amen. And uh, as I said, you know, we're not going to tarry long, but I just want to just say those few things about Palm Sunday. And, and, you know, the world, like Pastor said earlier, is the world is conducive. They're, they're, they're looking at Palm Sunday, and they're looking at us, you know, how we worship and praise on Palm Sunday. Sometimes we forget about with, with the, the, we forget about the importance of Palm Sunday. You know, and we've gotten to that point, you know, that we get the world gets so traditional. And forgive me if I say this, but we get so traditional in church sometimes. We get so traditional in church sometimes and it makes us not want to be here. 
And that's just telling the truth. You know, we get to a point right now that, you know, we get so easily beset it. We get so easily offended by something that someone says or hey, how someone really acts. You know, we get to a point that, you know, that, hey, I don't want to be there, you know. But we fail to realize what King Jesus done, you know. We fail to realize what he actually done and how he done and how he paid the price for us to allow us to be free, to allow us to have liberty in Christ Jesus. We fail to realize that. And the Lord is leading me right now of saying this because I, you know, I, I, I speak for myself. I get to that point sometime, you know, and I'll just be totally honest with you. I get to a point sometime, I, you know, I do what I do is because I love God. But when it comes down to, you know, that carnal part of me, that carnal part of me allows me or, or, or tries to trick me as the devil tried to trick me this morning. You know, <laughs> I, I'm being honest. He tried to trick me this morning. He tried to dupe me, you know. I mean, really dupe me. You know, throw a left or a right, try to hit me upside my head, <laughs> you know, which is, which is not of Christ. You know, but I have to be able to have some discernment there to be able to listen to God when he says, I'm with you at all times. I told you I would never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. I'm God and I'm God all by myself. I don't need nobody's help. But that's the God that we serve. That's the king that we serve. That's the mighty God that we serve. But the thing is, people of God, we have to be honest with one another. And we have to be honest mainly with ourselves. You know, if we're, going, if we're going to do this thing of church, we have to do this thing of church. So we have to be totally sold out. We have to be a point that we're sold out and that we're doing it because of God. Nothing else, not because of man, not because of anything else, but we're doing it because of God. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And know that if we're doing that, we're doing it because God has told us to do it. We're doing it because no one else doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what anyone else says about you or when anybody look at you or anybody thing that they, 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 they predict that you are. They cannot tell you who you are. God knows who you are. God knows who he has created. God knows that he has created you in the image. God knows the king of kings that rides on the throne that came in on a donkey. He knows who you are. He knows who you are. There's no doubt who I am. I'm an heir to the throne. Matter of fact, I'm a joint heir. Hallelujah. I'm a joint heir to the throne. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get through this right now, but God is saying, hey, God is saying, hey, he's saying, hey, he's talking to us right now. He's letting us know who we are. He's letting us know that he rides on the throne. He reigns on the throne. He's God. He's the king of our life, the lover of our soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God this morning. I thank him for uh, Pastor <laughs> Williams, I really thank you for the man of God of this house. I thank you because he allowed, you know, us as his elders, also the people of God to be able to, to look after the church, look after you as he has gone. And, you know, that we can't take that lightly. We have to know that even if he's not here, we still have an opportunity to praise even if he's not in the midst, we still supposed to do what we're supposed to do. We're still supposed to be within making sure that the body is taken care of. There's nothing but love for the body of the believers. But again, as I stated earlier, we have to tell the truth to one another. Amen. And we have to be real. We used to say this thing, if you ain't real, you ain't right. So, you know, you got to be real. Amen. Amen. And I, I, I just want to walk worthy of what he has called me to walk in. And then this, it says in, in, in the multitude, I'm going to leave off not too far after you left off, okay? And it said, and the multitude went before, and that followed, cry, followed crying, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that 
cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? That's a question. That's a question right there. That's a deep question. But Lord, Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your presence, Father. We ask that you continue to bless those that are here right now, Father. We ask that you bless those that are online right now, Father. Father, we ask that you bless our pastor, Father. Continue to let him arrive here safely, Father, from his trip, Father. We thank you for him having the opportunity, to, him and Brother Hill having the opportunity to get away, Father. Father, to be able to relax, Father, and to be able to do what you have called for them to do. As we know that he's away, Father, we will continue to praise you. We will continue to worship you. We will continue to give you the glory today, Father. We thank you for the quiet today, Father. We thank you for their witness, Father. We thank you for the songs that were sung, Father. We thank you for all the things that you're doing right now, Father. We thank you for changing the atmosphere in this church right now, Father. We thank you for C-O-T-M, Father. Oh, Father God, we are the people and we are the sheep of your pastor, Father. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you that you never left us forsaken nor either allowed us to be begging bread, Father. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you that we are your children, Father. So, Father God, let the words that come out of my mouth, Father, be edifying to you, Father. Let that be edifying to your people, Father. We thank you and we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so. I'm going to tell you that the answer to that question, okay? And then as we go, I want to go into Psalms 24. Amen. And as we go into Psalms 24, the reading is going to start at, at verse 1. Okay? Psalms 24, the earth, and the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath found it upon the sea. And establish it upon the floods. Hallelujah. Who shall ascend into, into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Hallelujah. He that, he that have clean hands and a pure heart. Who have not lifted up his, his soul unto vanity. Nor swore deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings of from the Lord and the righteousness from the, the God of his salvation. This is the, uh, the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, so I lift up. This is what I want to get to right here. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and ye be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king, the king, Listen to this. The king, the king. Y'all say the king. Everybody say the king. The king of glory shall come in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The king of glory shall ever come in. Who is this king? Who is this king? Who is this king? Who is this king? Is it Hosanna? Is it Hosanna? It is Hosanna. Hallelujah. The king of glory, the, uh, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Hallelujah. The Lord mighty in battle. Who is this king? Who is this king? Who is the king? That's the question that we should be asking ourselves. Who is this king? They was cheering him as he came in. They had to know that he was the king of glory. He was the king strong and mighty and strong in battle. Hallelujah. He is our king. Right, King Jesus. Right on, King Jesus. Right on, King Jesus. Sometimes we have to come to our, 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 ourselves and say sometimes, God, we know you are the king. That you reign over our lives, that you're true and that you've been faithful. There has been no other time that he has seen the righteous forsaken our its seed begging bread. But this is the king of glory. You got to let the, open the door and allow him to come in. He said that he would come in and sup with you. But you got to know that who you are. First of all, you got to know who you are and that you serve a king that rides on. The king of glory. Don't have no doubt. As the song said, this morning when I woke up. This morning when I woke up. This morning when I woke up. 
This morning when I woke up, I had no doubt that I served the king of glory, that I served a mighty God that is true and that is faithful. I served the lover of my soul, the redeemer, the king of glory. You got to let him in. You got to let him in. You got to let him in. You got to let them in. You can't let them shut, shut them out, but you got to let them in. Once you let them in, he's going to sup with you. And when he sup with you, you got to praise him for that. God, all, he asks, he, 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 God is a covenant keeping God. You know, and, and, and if you think about a covenant, covenant goes both ways. So he tells us to praise him. In spirit and truth, we were talking about the, 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 the songs and being able to be a symbol. But the thing is that we are, we have praises within us. We're the song. We're the symbol. We who God has called us for. When you're up there praising him, you're praising him with passion. You praise him because you love him and that you know that he's God, that he's true and that he's faithful with you. You worship him. You don't let rocks cry out for you. You worship him in spirit and truth because he's God. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. <laughs> he's the bright and morning star. He's the creator of heavens and earth. They said the fullness of the earth is his. He's created all things. God is good. He's an awesome God. He's a God that serves us. And we have to serve him as well. As I said, it's a two-way covenant. But we have to be the people of God. We can't allow the devil to defeat us. And, and, and this week is the holy week that's coming up. This is the beginning of it right now. I come to tell you and I come to bet you and I come to beseech you. I tell you the enemy is going to try to attack you. He's going to try to attack you. He's going to try to duke you as he tried to duke me already this morning. Like I told you. He's going to try to duke you because he doesn't want his word to go forth. He doesn't want us to worship Christ because how good he's been to us. He doesn't want that. He doesn't like that. He's already trying to come up against us. But we have to stand on the battlefield because we know who fights our battle. We know who has, has the victory already. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. There's nothing that can stop us. Nothing can stop us. We have not been defeated. He said, oh, death, where is that sting? You know, the sting has no victory over us. We should live because he lives. We're able to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So don't get defeated. Don't get, don't get to a point that you know that we, we have lost our hope. I'm telling you, you know, and I take from me, it's easy to do. It really is. It's easy to do. We can come in. I, I always say this. I say this all the time. We can come in church. Be worshiping, praising, then, you know, just lifting him up. Then as we go out the door, we what? Raise hell. <laughs> I say that all the time because church gets so traditional. It gets so traditional. It gets so, you know, routine. <laughs> it gets so routine and we get so burnt out to a point that, you know, that, that sometimes we, you know, we don't think about why are we doing it again? We don't think about what's the purpose of it. You know, church is for us to gather together and praise God together, but church is for us to really have a place to worship Christ. Church is a, a place that we, as you say, sister, give him more glory, to glorify him because he's worthy of it. The song said he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of all those things. But I come to beseech you, I tell you, hey, let's do what God told us to do. Hallelujah. 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 We serve a good God. We all, we ought to be praising him at all times. Somebody, you be driving down the street, somebody looking at you, and they be wondering, what you doing in that car? They be wondering, why you yelling, why you shouting in the car? You know, they be saying, that guy's crazy. I hear you, sister, because I do it. That guy is crazy. I might not be able to sing, but I tell you, I be singing. And I'll be praising, I'll be lifting up my hands, I'll be worshiping God because that's the truth. That's who I am. It doesn't matter how I sound, I'm making a cheerful noise unto my Lord because he's been good to me. He's been faithful to me. He has lifted me up, took me out of the moderate clay. <laughs>
He's able to set my feet on a solid rock. You know, so I had to lift my head up into him, no matter what. You heard A.P. White says, he says this. He says, I got three, son, three, three kids, and all of them are here right now. All of them are here right now. How good has God been to you? How good has God actually been to you? How good has God actually been to you? I'm telling you to think back. Take the opportunity to think back. Think about King Jesus. Think back what he's going to do at, on Friday. When Friday comes, he's going to take the pain for us. He's going to deal with it for us. But that's King Jesus. Yet he lived, so shall I live. I should live. He's taking the pain for you. He's going to deal with it for you. He just said, why me? Why me? Why me? I tell you why you, because you are his child. You are his, his likeness. You're the one that he has created. The Lord is my strength. He is my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? How could I be afraid of anyone? Because of who I am. And it, 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 it sounds arrogant in a way because it is arrogant. Because I know who I am. And I know who God has done and how far he has brought me. So therefore, all you got to do is think back. And matter of fact, you don't even have to think back but a year. <laughs> you think about last year. How far God has brought you. How far God has brought you. How far has he kept your children. How far has he fed you. Just think back. Think back. I come to say, ride King Jesus. Ride on King Jesus. Ride on King Jesus. Ride on King Jesus. The Lord of glory. Ride on King Jesus. Ride on King Jesus. Ride on King Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, for entering in this place. I thank you, God, for entering in this place. So I should not boast on myself, but I boast on God. Because if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him doing what he done, doing what he done for my sins, we could not be here today. So why can't we praise him? Why allow the enemy to attack you and to defeat you and tell you you're defeated? You are victorious. You are kings and heirs of the throne. Kings and queens. You're able to do all things because Christ done it for you. He paid the price already for you. That you could be here today. You're here today because it was not just some coincidence. You're here today because God has been good to you. He allowed you to get up this morning. When there's someone right now that has was unable to get up this morning. Some family member that might have died today. That's the that's the that's a fact. You know, as a reality. But we pray that their souls were saved. We pray that they were in Christ Jesus, that they were able to ride on King Jesus and worship him in spirit and truth. I tell you, this Palm Sunday, we cannot forget about what God has done for us. We cannot forget about how he set us free, that he took on the punishment. It says 72 thorns in that crown, that he took on the pain, the nails in his hands. The nails in his hand. He took on that so you could be able to move your hands. To be able not to have the migraines and the headaches when he took on that thorns up there. You were able to be able to not have those things, that pain. Could you imagine that pain? Could you imagine what he's done? And he done it because he loves you. He done it because he loves you. That's how we live. Those are the thoughts that we have to have in our mind all the time. To imagine that. It's just not just Palm Sunday, but it's every week. Every day that we live. 
we ought to be thinking about what he done for us and how he forgiven our sins and our transgressions. But then he loved us enough to hang there and ask his father, why have you forsaken me? You know, why have you, God, why have you forsaken me? You know, but then the, the, the scriptures had to be fulfilled. Zechariah talked about him coming in on the donkey, talked about him riding on a pony, which was a, a donkey, is a, 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 it said a coat, you know, and as I said earlier, I asked, you know, but he talked about that. But the thing is this, why did he do it for me? I said, I can't, I can't afford not to give him the glory. I can't afford not to wave the palm branches. I can't afford not to throw them at his feet to let him know that he's the king, that he's the king of glory. He's the God of gods. I can't afford not. We can't afford not. We can't afford not. We have to continue to praise him and give him the glory. I tell you, brothers and sisters, and, and we're not going to stay long because this, this is it. I just want to come to you today and tell you, today is a day of celebration. The world celebrated a different way, but we come to celebrate it here in the sanctuary and to give him the glory. Even as we leave today, as we leave today, and we go back to wherever we're coming from, our homes and everything else, there should be a time that we worship him. There should be a time that we're praising him. There should be a time that if we're off beat, can't sing, we should be glorifying him. Even if you're a Titan fan, Sister Rita, <laughs> you're a Titan fan, there should be some joy within us. Laughter is good for the soul. Laughter is good for the soul. It is wonderful for the soul. But we have nothing but joy. Nothing but joy today. Nothing but joy today. So I beseech you, brothers and sisters, I thank you. I thank you. And I thank you. I love each and every one of you. I thank God for COTM. I thank God for what he has planned for us. He has some mighty work for us to do. We can't stop right now. We got to keep pressing. We got to keep pressing. We got to keep pressing. That means the women, the men, the everybody in the house. We got to keep pressing. We got to keep pressing. And we got to tell the, the enemy, you're a liar, so therefore get up under my feet. We got to let them know. We got to be bold enough to let them know. We got to be bold enough to let them know. We got to be bold enough to let them know that we do not fear you. We do not fear you. You thought you had our king. You thought you conquered our king. You thought wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we reign with our king. We sit next to him right now. We're able to do all things. We're able to do all things. We're strong and mighty because who we serve. Now do we boast, but we tell everyone who we serve. Don't boast on yourself. You don't have to because God is going to give you the glory when he wants to. Amen. He will lift you. He will elevate you. That's the kind of God we serve. God bless you. I pray for you. I thank you. We thank that, you know, pastors here. Amen. And we thank God, you know, for the Holy Spirit. We thank God for the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. My sister told me, say, just pray, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, pray. Pray without ceasing. Do what God has told you to do.